Y'all, I have revamped my cinnamon raisin bread, gluten-free of course, and it is just like what you remember getting from the stores. So let's get into it and I'll show you just how easy it is to make. We'll start by making the dough, which includes one and a quarter cups or 300 milligrams of whole milk. And there are modifications and um, dairy-free alternatives in the recipe. Two large egg whites at room temperature then two large eggs also at room temperature. Unfortunately, I don't know of a good substitute for eggs. If you have one, you're welcome to try it. It never works for me, but you can try it. Two tablespoons or 10 grams of whole psyllium husks. Two tablespoons plus one and a half teaspoons or 24 grams of instant yeast. That's a lot of yeast and that is going to feed on all that sugar. That's one cup or 200 grams of granulated sugar. Seems like a lot, I know, but that yeast needs that sugar. It's more for the texture of the dough than the sweetness. And also you're going to get two loaves out of this. I'm just taking a little spatula and quickly stirring this together. It's not absolutely necessary. I just wanted to make sure that everything was combined before adding in the dry ingredients. Now this is dough conditioner and I, it's a, like a, kind of new to me and I'm trying it in a lot of my bread doughs that I want to remain soft for days and it really seems to work great. It's one tablespoon. I will leave a link for that below. Totally optional. And then we have 490 grams of Kim's gluten-free bread flour blend, the recipe of which is linked below in the description box always and one and three quarter teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. So we get this on the mixer on low. A lot of you ask me if you can do this by hand or with a um, handheld mixer. I think the handheld mixer will work okay, if, especially if you have the dough hooks. It is a rather thick dough. So doing it by hand would take some real elbow grease. You could try it. I've never tried it myself, but I don't see why it wouldn't work as long as everything gets well incorporated. So I'm adding in the butter, which is three quarters cup or 169 grams of very soft butter. You need to make sure your butter is super soft or it will not incorporate into the dough. If your butter is not super soft, if you didn't plan ahead, just go ahead and microwave it until it's melted. It'll be fine. It'll still incorporate in just fine. Once all the butter is in, you can go ahead and crank up the speed to about medium or medium high, whichever you'd like, and let it go for five minutes. I always set a timer for this and just walk away and come back in five minutes. There it is, my timer just went off. So five minutes later, you've got a nice, smooth, supple kind of sort of dough, but it won't be a dough until tomorrow. We have to put this in the fridge overnight. Okay, I'm just scraping down the sides and we're gonna cover this and let it proof until at least doubled in size. That could take anywhere from one to two hours. And then we're gonna put it in the fridge overnight because it requires that refrigeration so that we can work with it. Okay, it's been overnight, so our dough is ready. I'm just gonna combine the brown sugar cinnamon. This is a half a cup or 100 grams of light brown sugar and four teaspoons of cinnamon. And I'll just mix this together really quick. It doesn't have to be perfect because we can break it up a little more with our hands when we're sprinkling it. So I just got the dough out of the fridge and I'm gonna sprinkle my surface liberally with flour because this will stick and you do need a lot of flour to work with. Not a lot, but you know, a good amount, a good liberal amount, as you can see here. And I'm just gonna do a quick knead of this because I'm gonna divide it in half and I'm gonna put the other half away for another day, another loaf for whatever. Put that back in the fridge and I'm just gonna make one loaf right now. So I'm just temporarily kneading this into a smooth mass so that I can then weigh it and cut it in half. The whole thing weighs 1386 grams, so half of that is 693, so I'm going to go for 693 grams for each half. You don't have to be this precise. I just like to be this precise when it deals with baking especially. 
Normally I would be making two loaves, but since I'm just wanting to make one loaf just to show you, I'm gonna put the other half in the fridge for a couple of days where it'll sit until I'm ready to make the other loaf. Okay, so I'm gonna roll this out to a rectangle that's about a quarter of an inch thick. I don't ever go and give like rectangle sizes. I'd rather say the thickness of the actual bread or the dough because it just makes it easier than having to like break out a ruler and get an exact precise rectangle because you'll see in a minute that my rectangle is far from precise. Usually I am pretty precise on my rolling out, but I really don't care at this point because it's all going to be rolled up into a loaf of bread. But what I want to do is get this nice and thin so it it sticks and you'll, you might need to add some extra flour here and there, but you want to get it to a quarter of an inch thick because you want like maximum um, filling in every bite, right? And also I found that if you roll it too thick, you will be left with like these holes of in between the uh, filling and the bread itself. And you don't want that when you're dealing with a bread like this that you want to maybe toast or make French toast out of or whatever because if it's falling apart then it's not going to go in your toaster too well. So now we'll go ahead and uh, brush on the egg wash. I found this to be the best method for getting everything to stick. I tried it with butter and that just didn't it like seeped out didn't really work um, I had large holes in it it just was not good then I tried just a simple water like brushing it with water to see if that would work and still again didn't work as well as the egg so I'm going with the egg and this is just an egg wash it's one egg mixed with about a tablespoon of water and I always throw in a little pinch of salt because the salt helps to break up that um, egg white so you don't get these gloppy huge gloppy bits of egg white so get that all over and you'll save the rest of that egg wash for brushing the top after it has proofed now we can sprinkle on the brown sugar cinnamon and i'm just crushing up a few of those little brown sugar lumps and just sprinkle it everywhere get it on every single bit of that dough until you can't see the dough anymore. Now I'm just gonna take my hands and make sure that I get every little corner of that dough because we want all of that brown sugar cinnamon goodness in every single bite. And kind of press down on it a little bit so it sticks really well to the egg, egg uh, wash. Now for our raisins. And just randomly throw those about. And then I kind of press down on the raisins as well to get them somewhat adhered. They're not going to adhere too well, but they will all roll up nicely and then just start rolling. Start out as tightly as you can get it without it tearing. And if it tears a little bit, it's okay. Just keep rolling it up because that next layer will just cover up that tear. Once you get it going, it's pretty easy to then roll up from there. There. I don't even seal the bottom because the weight of the top will seal the bottom just fine. So we have a nice long log and I'm going to cut that in half. And the reason I'm cutting it in half is so I can overlap it kind of like you would do a bobka in a sense. I don't think this is quite the same as the bobka, but it's similar. So I'm making an X and I'm just folding each end over 
So you almost get like a double swirl and it looks pretty, but the reason I'm doing it is to assure that the filling doesn't disconnect from the bread and you have those large gaping holes. So now I'm putting it in my lined pan. I've lined my eight inch or eight and a half inch loaf pan with uh, parchment paper and I've sprayed that and I'll cover this loosely with plastic wrap. I always cover my breads loosely with the plastic wrap versus pulling it tight across because especially when dealing with gluten-free breads, they are likely to tear before they bust out of that plastic wrap. So we'll let this proof until nearly doubled in size. So this is exactly where you want it. It's a couple inches over the top of the pan. It's about one and a half times its original size. So we'll go ahead and brush the egg wash on. Make sure you get into all those crevices because you don't want some areas being like non-colored and the rest being nice and dark. And we are gonna put this in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 15 minutes. Then we're gonna cover it with tin foil, just tent it with tin foil and reduce the temperature to 350 degrees and bake it for another 45 to 50 minutes or until a, a thermometer inserted into the center registers at 190 to 200 Fahrenheit. And then you remove it from the oven, leave it in the pan for about 10 to 15 minutes or until it's cool enough to handle and take out of the pan. But look at this, you guys. I wish you could smell this right now. My whole house smells absolutely fabulous. I'm waiting for it to cool completely before cutting it. And you have to see this swirl action going on. See, there's not a lot of um, empty space or pockets of air, and it smells absolutely fabulous. I'm going to cut a slice, and you can see just how beautiful this is, how beautifully it cuts. It's nice and soft, but it sticks or stays together, so it's perfect for putting in a toaster without all of it falling apart and putting a little butter on it, or even making French toast out of it. I hope you guys enjoy it.